We finished another one. Metal Gear Solid 2 is checked off the list and damn, this is a masterpiece video game. Guys, let's take a look at Metal Gear Solid 2. So Metal Gear Solid 2 came out in 2001. This was on the then newly released PlayStation 2 console. There's a lot of stuff going on that really allows Kojima to up the production value and up the cinematic value. If you want Kojima in a nutshell, this is probably the game that describes him best, like really crazy storyline concepts going in there with a lot to say. He, he clearly has a lot to say and with a, just an insane amount of game mechanics. Oh my God, we knocked him off the edge. Oh God, what a game this is. Storyline wise, it's a couple years after the events of Metal Gear Solid, Snake and Otacon go out on their own to become like vigilante Metal Gear hunters. They find out about a Metal Gear that's being made. Metal Gear. And things go awry. Stuff goes down, a lot of backs get stabbed, a lot of double crosses go down, and Snake ends up right in the opening sequence, going down with a sinking tanker in the middle of Hudson River. Cut to a little bit after that, we get an entirely new hero. After this opening sequence, you're playing as a new character called Raiden. You start to appreciate like the gall that Kojima has where after the first Metal Gear games, everybody's very attached to Solid Snake. The fact that he would sort of do this bait and switch right at the beginning of this game is pretty incredible uh, on his part. He never wants to rest on his laurels. That, if that wasn't clear before, it certainly is now. What are you? Oh. Hmm. What the? You're... A man? In Metal Gear Solid 2, the mechanics have been fleshed out to an incredible degree. You can actually go up to guards, take your gun, put it up behind their head, and hold them up. They'll put their arms up. You know, they don't want to be killed, so they'll drop items as well as a unique dog tag that is specific to that exact enemy that you held up. And this creates an entire sort of like game within a game mechanic of trying to collect as many dog tags as you can. It becomes really fun to, to attempt to do that and it adds a whole new layer on top of the proceedings. Please don't. Another major new mechanic that they added to Metal Gear Solid 2 is the concept of non-lethal takedowns. They start you out in the game with a tranquilizer gun and it creates a lot of interesting situations. Killing them becomes sort of like the easy way out. Knocking them out means you're instantly on a time limit. Before they wake up, you wanna do whatever you gotta do. You can stuff them into lockers, you can hide them in different spots, you can drag their bodies away. The guards' bodies do not disappear in this game like they used to in Metal Gear Solid 1. So you actually have to deal with the logistical concept of, I knocked this guy out, he's laying on the ground. If another guard comes by, he's gonna see this guy. So I need to actually move him physically out of the way. Experimentation is highly encouraged where you really start thinking like a spy because the game will support that. Most video games, you're working within a very limited you know, number of mechanics. You start to kind of like wrap your head around what's possible and it immediately, as soon as you feel like you understand everything there is to know, it becomes less interesting. In Metal Gear Solid 2, it always feels like the game is bigger than you could ever imagine. It always feels like Kojima has thought of more things than you'll ever be able to do in the game and that makes it a constantly exciting experience. It makes it a constantly engaging experience. Oh my god. He's peeing, you can see the pee! I gotta try it. Oh! It's vibrating! Oh, oh no! Don't open your mouth, Raiden! So the bosses in Metal Gear Solid 2 are a cell of rogue agents. It's kind of like how Foxhound was in Metal Gear Solid 1, but in this game, it makes it a lot more interesting that they are very disorganized. Like from the outset, you kind of get the concept that even within their agency, they're not all necessarily on the same page. Uh, they're just kind of all out there doing their own things for their own motivations, and it creates these, these cool storyline situations. My name is Fortune, lucky in war and nothing else and without a death to call my own. Hurry, kill me, please. When you're fighting these bosses, you really gotta put your thinking cap on. There are all these aspects where the game is actively trying to trick you. 
think the Psycho Mantis battle in Metal Gear Solid 1, but you know, spread throughout the game. Kojima definitely, you could tell that he loved that concept from the first game and he really wanted to start expanding the possibilities throughout the boss battle. So you're rarely gonna find a boss battle in Metal Gear Solid 2 that is just a straight up boss battle. There's usually something very particular about each one and that makes it super interesting. So we played the PlayStation 2 version of MGS2 and they actually have prequel novels in this game that you can read that are hundreds of pages long that go into various kind of like alternate perspectives on the events of the first game. And you meet characters who end up being in Metal Gear Solid 2. So if you have access to the PlayStation 2 version of this game, I don't think they ever included it in the remasters, so you would have to acquire the original version. And especially if you're a Metal Gear fan, I think you're gonna get a lot out of that. I don't understand. I read about you and Snake in In the Darkness of Shadow Moses. I don't give a damn what that piece of trash said. Do you get me? So guys, that's Metal Gear Solid 2. Let me know what you guys think of this game in the comments below. I absolutely adore it. I hope you do too. Don't forget to subscribe on this YouTube channel if you want to see more of these. We've been doing Metal Gear game reviews as well as all sorts of other stuff on here. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.